what is a dangling pointer now this is also again an operating system concept where we discuss what is a dangling pointer so dangling pointer is a pointer that reference to a location in memory that may have been given to someone else by freeing some memory while preserving a pointer to that memory so basically it is a pointer that used to point to a real time data but now the data has been cleared now the now the pointer is actually pointing to nothing okay so that is a dangling reference now this is usually a large problem in case of uh, c programming or c++ and uh, this is solved in rust so by contrast the compiler guarantees that references will never be dangling because if you have a reference towards some data the compiler will ensure that the data will not go out of scope before the reference of the data does okay so dangling reference is basically a reference which is pointing to nothing see like let me just create a pointer x which is pointing to the value y in memory and now i have cleared the value y using a mutable reference now what happens now x is pointing to nothing right so this kind of a scenario won't happen in rust because uh, rust would obviously generate or raise a compile time error but this is possible in case of programming languages like c where you will be prompted by an error called a segmentation default core dump okay that is when hap uh, it happens when uh, you are having some dangling pointers or you are uh, pointing to a memory that has not been allocated or you have not allocated memory and then you are trying to access different variables etc etc so there are different kinds of memory errors that usually happens when you are uh, playing with pointers okay so what is slice see a slice of cake or a slice of anything so it's basically to have a sub part of something old right so something old you can take a sub part so slices are a reference of a contiguous sequence of elements in a collection rather than the whole of a collection it is basically a substring or a sub array something which is sub to a old stuff okay so it's like uh, when you have an array from 1 to 10 a slice would be an array from 2 to 4 or from 2 to 8 so it's actually sub part of the entire stuff right and this is called as a slice it's like the slice of cake so you just cut the cake into different slices and you're taking a path out of the entire thing okay now sometimes we might need to access slices because we only want to take our concentration to that particular point if you have did some problems like sliding window problems then we are actually using slices or sliding window to pass uh, from like the entire content of the uh, you know the data structure so is uh, what happens is in rust a slice is a kind of reference so it does not have the ownership now slice type reference is used when we do not when we have to return indexes of strings which are cleared without clearing the returned index and here we would rather return the reference to the slice rather than an index now we have a straightforward api that is much harder to mess up okay i'll show you some examples so that it will be more clear to you guys yeah we'll come to slices so this is a uh, array like let me use data is 1 2 3 4 and then i can create a mutable slice of the array that is let slice is and mute data so what am i doing i have created an array which is mutable so this is a mutable array of i32 right that is integers so this thing can be changed okay at any point of time i can change its value now what i am going to do i am going to do is to create a slice and a slice by means is a sub array so sub array now 1 to 4 means containing the elements from index 1 to index 3 so here it would be from 2 3 0 1 2 3 4 right so it should be from 2 to 4 and uh, the idea is you can also change like this is you can change slice 0 equal to 10 slice 1 equal to 2 and slice 2 equal to 30 now we are going to print the data by using the debug operator okay now let's see what will happen when we actually try to change the data using this one so yeah so if you see that the first creation was 1 2 3 4 5 right so the data was data which is the array was initially given the values 1 2 3 4 5 then i created a reference to that array and named it as a slice and this is a mutable reference as you can see so it can be used to change the values of this sub array and now 
I am changing the values of the index 0th uh, value of the slice to 10 and index 1th value to 20 and the index 2th uh, value to 30. Okay. And now I am changing the values using the mutable reference. This slice is actually the mutable reference, it's not an array. It's a reference to the subarray. And now I'm going to try to print this initial array. So when I print that output, you can see the output came out to be 10, 20, 34, 34 and 5. Now why did it bring, why did it change like that? Because I changed the initial value to 10, I changed the second value to 20 and I changed the third method. What will happen if I would try to change slice 3 to 100? And then I try to compile, it still works. And then I do slices. Now you can see that the fourth value has been changed to 100. The fourth value is the index 3 value, okay? So that is what we did using a slice. I think the idea is clear. Slice is basically a subarray. So slide type is a reference. So we do not, uh, we can return index of strings which are cleared without clearing the return. Uh, here what we do is we create a string then we keep an ampersand s and we clear it. Now what the problem is you have an ampersand s that is you have uh, a reference to the string which has been already now, now clear. <clears throat> now, the issue with this kind of a program is it would create a dangling pointer that I have mentioned before. So this would end up in an error because you are actually creating and passing a particular kind of uh, ampersand s to the word and now you are going to clear it. Okay, now what this first word function does is it will give you the index of the first word. When it's in case of hello world, see so this first word function is a, uh, it is not a library function it is something that we have actually created by ourselves okay so if you see in the back you can see the first word function is actually taking the string and it gives the index to the value okay so we keep the index to the number so what happens here is uh, we will get the index value here but the issue is we have already cleared the string so we'll get a integer value to for the value word but this s has been cleared so uh, the length is associated with the string. The length associated with the string has been already cleared. So now this will also bring a compile time error asking for resolution. But this is not the case in any other language. If you see in C, it does allow you to do all these things and have all these kind of memory errors. Okay. So what happens is the let word will contain the index of the first word. And then we clear the string. Now what happens initially, you see word actually has the size or the in index of the first word, right? And we clear the entire string. Now what has it got? Like word has the index of the first uh, like word in the string, but the word has been entirely cleared. Now what is it pointing to? So it does not have a relevant index because we have already cleared the existing string so this would also be uh, considered as a compile time error in case of rust this is really great because uh, rust can find these kinds of uh, memory errors by default and will obviously show this uh, at compile time which is really great because we do not have to face this during the execution the question is which of the following is a slice equivalent to the entire string in rust here x is the string so the option a which is s equal to ampersand x 0 to 2 and s equal to ampersand x s equal to ampersand x 1 s equal to ampersand x 0 to x dot line and then you have the second question which is state whether true or false slice has ownership over the contents it hold so the first question was which of the following is a slice equivalent to the entire string in rust here x is the string so the answer is uh, option B, that is and ampersand x to against everything, okay. So it's a similar implementation that you can see in the case of uh, Python also. Uh, when you, you can use this double dots or uh, columns, you know, in order to represent the entire string. And the next one is state whether true or false, lies has ownership over the content it holds. So the answer is false, as I have mentioned before, it is does not have ownership, it is actually a reference, okay. So reference, don't mess it up with ownership. Reference means you are actually only taking the address and not the value. Ownership means you're taking the entire value. Okay.